Our prophetic theme for the month, which we have been riding on since this month began, is wisdom from above and thrones. Wisdom from above and thrones. And all through our Sunday services, we have been looking at the teaching unveiling the reality of wisdom. Unveiling the reality of wisdom. The wisdom from above is real. From our earlier teachings, we established the fact that there are four types of wisdom. As stated in James chapter 3 and verses 15 to 17, there are four types of wisdom. Earthly or natural wisdom, sensual or intellectual wisdom, devilish or diabolic wisdom, and the wisdom that comes from above, which is what we call divine wisdom, verse 17. The Bible gives us a picture of that kind of wisdom. The wisdom that is above is pure. Peaceably. You can't operate by that wisdom and not have peace in every area of your life. It is gentle. Easy to be entreated. Full of mercy and good fruits. You can't carry and operate in divine wisdom without feasible proofs. Fruits to show which is what we call fruitfulness. Without partiality, without hypocrisy, it does not skim. It automatically secures favor anywhere it is operated. Praise the name of the Lord. Say wisdom that attracts for you favor in life. You can't be productive and not be celebrated. It is that kind of wisdom that gives you a place wherever you step into. Even when there is no place, they create a place for you. So you don't have to scheme, you don't have to be crooked to wear the crown. This kind of wisdom enthrones automatically. You don't have to be crooked to wear the crown. You don't have to be crooked to wear the crown. It is pure. It enthrones. That's the wisdom from above. And the Bible says, He that cometh from above is above all. John chapter 3 and verse 31. So this kind of wisdom we are talking about, divine wisdom, it takes people up. It wears a crown on them. That's why I'm too sure before this month is over, there is going to be a strange promotion for somebody here. If that person is here, you will hear a loud amen from me. I'm not sure where that person is seated, but if, if you are the one, let me hear your loud shout. It enthrones. That's what you call divine wisdom. What is divine wisdom therefore? What is divine wisdom? Number one. Divine wisdom is a manifestation of the wisdom of God in the lives of men. The manifestation of the wisdom of God. I told you earlier on there are different types of wisdom. But divine wisdom is the manifestation of the God's dimension of wisdom in man. And it is unique. It is compared.
dwelling. It is attractive. It is intimidating. In Genesis chapter 41 and verses 15 and 16, Genesis chapter 41 and verses 15 and 16, look at the way Pharaoh described the operation of this wisdom in Joseph. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I dreamt a dream. I dreamt a dream and there is none that can interpret. And I have had, I have had say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. That's strange. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It is not in me. It comes from somewhere. Verse 17. God will give Pharaoh an answer. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. He started. And thereafter, we knew what happened. Joseph came out with the interpretation of that dream. He came with the interpretation of that dream. That wisdom is not ordinary. That wisdom is from above. I have heard of thee that you are in the interpreter of dreams. Joseph said, Ah, Pharaoh, hold it. It is not in me. Natural wisdom cannot do that. This is the source. It is only a manifestation of God in me. It is not me. So divine wisdom is a manifestation of the wisdom of God in the lives of men. That is why that dimension of wisdom generates divine manifestations. In Daniel chapter 2, and verse 26 to 28, the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Bethesheser, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise man the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king because it's not natural. But there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are this. There is a God in heaven which reveals secrets. There is a God in heaven and then at the end of the day, that dream was revealed. That secret was revealed to Daniel and then the interpretation. So divine wisdom is the manifestation of the wisdom of God in the lives of men. What is divine wisdom number two? Divine wisdom is a product of putting the word of God to work. In the lives, in our lives as individuals, putting the word of God into work, putting the word of God into work in our lives is what we call wisdom. Putting the word of God to work, putting the word of God to work, putting the word of God to work. Matthew chapter 7 and verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, 24 and 25. The Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Therefore, whosoever heareth 
These things of mine, and do with them, and do with them. I will liken this man to a wise man. Unfortunately, there are so many hearers in church, few doers. The blessing comes with the doing. God's intervention comes with the doing. Thank God for your, for, for, for your title. Thank God for your activities in church. Thank God for your service. Oh, I mean, three units. It's good. It's encouraging. And all that. But the blessings of God, God's intervention upon your life is a product of your obedience to the world. If thou be willing and obedient, thou shalt eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1, 19. If thou be willing and obedient, if thou be willing and obedient, thou shalt eat the good of the land. Job chapter 36 and verse 11. If they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey and serve me. If they obey and serve me. If they obey and serve me. You can be serving God and yet not obey Him. It's possible. And then you say, ah, I've been doing everything, I've been doing everything, and I've been this one, I've been paying, I've been doing this, I'm in this unit. And then the key things that he asks you to do, you have not done it. Mary told the disciples of Jesus, I know you people are very, very zealous. You like running around, you do everything, you know, you are full of activities. It's good and all that, but let me tell you, whatever he tells you to do, do. That's where the miracle is. Whatever he tells you to do, do. That's where the blessing, that's where God's intervention comes in. It's good to wear wristband. You put three of them there. I'm a winner. I have dominion. It's good to have what is it called? Um, stickers everywhere. Put one in your car, put one in your house, put one in your shop, put one on your dress, put one. It's good. But God's manifestation is provoked through your obedience. Jesus said, get water into the pot. He said, it's wine we want. He said, get water. If they had argued, nothing would have happened. And they went getting water. Obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. To hearken than the fat of ram. Wisdom is not just hearing God's word. Doing the word. Doing the word. Doing the word. This man shall be likened to a wise man. Psalm 119 verses 97 to 100. Psalm 119 verses 97 to 100. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. I love your word. Thou, through thy commandments, has made me wiser than my enemies, for, that, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I love your word. I meditate upon them. Through your commandment, you have made me wiser. It is God's word that makes people wiser. Through your commandment, you have made me wiser than all my enemies. They are always there. It will be an unscriptural prayers to be praying, Oh God, oh God, let there not be enemy. Oh God, let there not be enemy. It's not scriptural. You don't need to offend people before they turn themselves as your enemy. It's just natural. That's the ministry of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. It's in the ministry of the devil. So you don't need to offend anybody. That's why even the people you do good, they turn against you. They are only fulfilling the ministry of somebody, which is the devil. 
Oh God, let there not be enemy. Let there not be. They will be. They will be. They will be because they are your stepping stone for promotion. Without opposition, your position cannot go up. Praise the name of the Lord. Without test, there is no testimony. So, adversaries, you know, are there as raw, raw material to your shining in life. Praise the name of the Lord. Joseph may never have gotten to the palace if he was not hated. Praise the name of the Lord. Adversaries, enemies, they only make your testimony sweeter. Praise the name of the Lord. So your problem is not the adversaries. It's because you don't know your own covenant right in God. Jesus had en enemies without offending them. Praise the name of the Lord. To thy commandments, thou hast made me wiser. The enemies will always be there, but God makes you wiser than them. You always go ahead of them. That's divine wisdom. Divine wisdom makes your enemies always to arrive late. Praise the name of the Lord. Before they know what is happening, you have moved. While they are still waiting for you, they heard that, oh, you are in front there. The enemies will not catch up with you anymore. In the name of Jesus. That's what the word of God do, does. It makes you wiser. It makes you wiser. In the midst of scarcity, God gives you the wisdom to trade, to overcome it. When people are going down the same place, you are going up through the wisdom of God. Through the wisdom of God. In the same organization, they are retrenching people. They will only create more space for you for your promotion. God keeps giving you wisdom. And then they want to lay everybody. They say, no, no, but this person, no, 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 no. Because of the oppression of divine wisdom in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. What are your assets therefore to this divine wisdom? What is your assets? What are your assets? Number one, true meekness of spirit. True meekness of spirit. God will resist the proud. But he will give more grace to the humble. That's what the Bible says. In Daniel chapter 2 and verse 30. See what Daniel said. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me by any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation of, to the king. And that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart as for me. This secret is not revealed to me of any man's wisdom. He wasn't bragging in himself. Anything that God will give you that is not sure you will not take the glory, he will not give you. The last thing that happened through your hands concerning your business Concerning your career. What was your disposition? Did you not pretend as if you are the doer? Praise the name of the Lord. Some good things happen, happen in your place of work and all that. And people are commending you. Ah, Mr. So and so. I can see that you are, you, are, you, are, you are doing very well and all that. In fact, blah, 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 blah. And you say, yes, ah, you, you know this head is sharp. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, no, no. Something is here. Something. Since I was born, my father told me that I'm a different child. In fact, everybody knows me. This head... Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible said, what is it that a man has that he was not given? 
God said, hey, that head is sharp, eh? Okay, no problem. I'm watching you. The meek. Your access to divine wisdom is meekness of heart. You want to read the word, you need a way out concerning some challenges in your life. You, 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 you tell God, Lord, my heart is open. Show me what I don't know. Show me what I don't know. That's the kind of heart that God will show. Some people come to church and they hear God's word in particular direction in their heart, their life. But pride will not allow them to take it. To take it. Meekness is what guarantees access to divine wisdom. Meekness. 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 If God is sure you won't take his glory, he will grant you access. Genesis chapter 41 and verse 16. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It's not in me. Oh. You know sometimes, if you are not careful, people can, can turn you against God. They will so much almost trap you in if you are not sensitive. They will clap for you as if you are the doer. And God will be watching your disposition to it. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe you are representing your organization and then you are presenting something and as you spoke, people rose up and clap and your hair was just And then after the meeting, somebody came to you and said, wow, that was a wonderful, brilliant presentation. Everything. And you say, yes, I, I prepare for that paper. The things I wrote, they came from here. Praise the name of the Lord. And I didn't even finish speaking. No. I just... Praise the name of the Lord. It's like when you look at a woman and say, Ah, you are looking very beautiful. You say, ah, I don't even put powder. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Joseph said, It is not in me. Don't turn your attention to me. There is a God who gives the answer. I'm only a vessel. I'm only a transmitter. It's not in me. That's the one that we have, con that we have continuous access to the wisdom of God. Numbers chapter 12 and verses 1 to 3. Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman which he had married. And they said, Had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. That was why God could keep speaking secretly, secret, giving him secrets. Meek above all. Miriam wanted to bulldoze him with age. Is my junior. It's not in age. Old age does not speak. Divine wisdom is what speaks. It's not in age. Meek, the meek will have access to divine wisdom. Hallelujah. Number two access to divine wisdom is the engagement of our spirit. Engagement of our spirit. Engagement of our spirit. God speaks to us through our spirit. We have access 
to the deep things of God through our spirit. Our spirit is the connection to his spirit. In Job chapter 32 and verses 7 to 8, the Bible says, This you speak, and multitude of years, old age, I think is supposed to teach wisdom. The older you are, the wiser you're supposed to be. But he said, no, 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 that's not the formula. This is the formula. That is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty gave them understanding. The breath of the Holy Ghost upon the spirit of man gives him access to deep secrets, divine secrets that makes him outstanding in life. Can you see the place of your spirit now concerning your destiny? That's why you must not be careless with your spirit. Your spirit is the receptor. That's what receives, that's what connects with the spirit of God. To draw deep wisdom that makes for high flyers in life. So never be careless with your spirit. Never be nonchalant when it comes to developing your spirit, man. Oh, people spend so much money dressing their physical body. I wish that's the same way they dress their spiritual man. Hallelujah. Somebody will look for money that is not, does not have get it and all that all because he wants to buy a new dress and a new shoe to match and a new bag to wedge somebody can starve herself only because he wants to buy a makeup kit or some new set of wevon it's nothing wrong in that it's not a sin A man can deny himself some comfort just because he wants to buy one wristwatch that he has just seen his friend use last week. But the same person can afford to stay out of church. We tell you he doesn't have transport money to come and hear God's word. Praise the name of the Lord. A woman can stay in saloon making her hair for hours. Inside that imprisonment, they put one thing on top of you that is blowing hot. You sleep, you wake up. The thing is there. You say, for where? This hair, I must do you today anyhow. Never take light. They go to own generator. So you are suffering two things. Heat is hitting you. Generator noise is there. You say, for where? I must finish this hair today. And stays in salon for five hours to make one hairstyle. The hairstyle that when water touches it, it is, it is scattered again. Betty, has, she has come to touch. And then watching time every minute, watching the wristwatch. We no go close. Ah, uh -uh, pastor, you don't do nabi. The one way you talk, don't do nabi. Uh -uh. Time don't reach you. And the church has closed five minutes after the time, and it's a problem to her. Praise the name of the Lord. Because no value for spiritual things. A man can go and stay with his friends. Sit down. What are they talking about politics? Sit down for hours. Read all the newspaper of the day on articles. And debate. And de You are not a lawyer. You are not a member of the House of Representatives. You are not local government chairman. Nobody, nobody will hear all what you are saying there. But he must talk. He will analyze everything there. Hours. 
he has no problem. But it's only when he comes to church. He's itching to go. He's itching to go. He's itching to go. And that's the one who came late to church 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And he must, he, he, he cannot stay one minute extra. Even before church closes. Do you know communion? Make a, if I, as I shag that communion, they go, he carry Bible. As he takes the communion, thank God, I don't take this one today. Make one of the share the goodness there. I have dominion. Before I go, I get them plenty. He has gone. He has no value for his spiritual development. No value. He will not go to Bible school. He will not attend home cell fellowship. Can you imagine? Home cell is inside his house. Inside is a home cell provider. They are doing home cell. He will lock himself inside inside, inside uh, bedroom and be watching Manchester United and uh, and 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 Chelsea. People are praying there. He is shouting inside the room. Or he will he, he, ten minutes or fifteen minutes to home cell. Thirty minutes. He will tell his family, I'm coming. He has gone out. Is that Christianity? No value for your spirit. It is the quality of your spirit that determines the quality of wisdom that you operate. Of God's wisdom that you operate. That's why you must begin to cherish your spiritual development. Develop your spirit. You have been born, in, born again five years, seven years, and your language is still raw. Raw, because your spirit is dry. Spirit is dry. Your spirit is dry. They are still pushing you like a vehicle that has no fuel. Bro, tomorrow is prayer now. Try come now. I, say, I will look whether I will come or not. If I have chance, I will try. They say try now. Try. They are following up new convert. They are still following you. After five years, he said, Weather is cold, there's too much rain, and there's this, there's that. I complain. The quality of your spirit is what determines the quality of your life. Praise the name of the Lord. The quality of your spirit, no value. Begin to value spiritual development. They've announced the, the theme of the month. He will never buy any book, nor even the one he has, he won't read. He won't read. He won't read. There is a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty, the breath of the Holy Ghost upon your spirit, man, is what gives you access to the deep secret of God. You've heard the testimony of God's own Bishop Edebo. Many times I took books, I took the Bible and I went to the mountain. As I was praying and reading, suddenly light came and I rose up and I said, I can never be sick. And that terminated sickness in his life. He's not making mouth. It is light. It is a brooding of the Holy Ghost upon his spirit that got him to that point. Praise the name of the Lord. Please begin to value your spiritual development. Anything that stems to choke your spirit will make you wisdom dry. So val guard your spirit with all jealousy. All this life of malice here, you know, they choke a man's spirit. They choke a man's spirit. That's the damage it does to your spirit, man. If somebody has wronged you now two years, you are still keeping it in your heart. And you are in the same church. You are in the same unit. Or maybe the person's name is Joseph. So anytime you open the Bible, you want to read something about Joseph, the, the picture came, comes to your mind and you stop. And God will punish you, this Joseph. Praise the name of the Lord. Even if the Holy Spirit was speaking at that moment, you are disconnected. 
praise the name of the Lord. Please ventilate your spirit man. Get your spirit man healthy so that you can have access to the secret of God. Get your spirit man healthy. Get your spirit man healthy because that is your connecting channel to the spirit of God for divine wisdom. Praise the name of the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 to 34, we saw how people came from everywhere to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceedingly much and largeness of hearts, even as the sound that is on the seashore. Hallelujah. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men than Ethan, the Ezraites, and Heman, and Kalko, and Dada, the son of Mahu. And his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. And he spake of trees from the cedar trees that is Lebanon upon the high sob, springed out of the wall. He spake also of beasts and of fowl, of creeping things. And all that. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom makes you an attraction. Before this year is over, everything concerning you will become an attraction. Your life will become an attraction. Your business will become an attraction. Your career will become an attraction. Your family will become an attraction. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Develop your spirit man. Develop your spirit man. If they are still pushing you to come to church, there is a problem. They are still pushing you to come to meet with service, there is a problem. Hallelujah. Be addicted to anything that enhances the development of your spirit man. That's where your exploit, your greatness lies. When your spirit is dry, every other thing in your life becomes dry. When you listen to somebody's language, you can tell what is happening to his spirit. You can tell what is happening to his spirit. Ah, bro, we didn't see you in church yesterday. Yes, I seek. And they say, don't say like that. Ah, ah no, go talk so. I say, I, I seek. They know they seek. As I did, now every place for my body, they pay me. My head, they knock. My back, be like I say, then they hit me with sun. My leg, self, if I know be my leg, be like I say, they won't cut them. Everything wrong words, everything, you know, like that. Everything just wrong. His perspective is wrong. His interpretation is wrong. His comportment is wrong. His speech is wrong. His action is wrong because he's dry. As a man thinking is in her, so is he. When there is nothing there, he will just be moving, talking anyhow and all that. Praise the name of the Lord. Talking anyhow, just doing things anyhow. That's why some people can sit down comfortably hours. They will be cutting people down, slandering people, talking about everybody, their pastor, their church, their leaders, everybody. Talk anyhow. Because the spirit man is dry. No iota of spirituality. Praise the name of the Lord. Push your neighbor and say, wake up. Tell him, develop your spirit man. And then you will have access to divine wisdom. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. Today is our covenant day of settlement. Oh, I'm so excited because you know something about God. God is settling that issue concerning your life. I say God is settling that issue concerning your life. God is settling that issue concerning your life. In the name of Jesus. Every child of God is ordained for timely settlement. Not just settlement. Timely settlement. Timely settlement. So any challenge that is confronting you right now, it has a, 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 a time tag. It's not forever. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not forever. Any challenge that is beyond a particular season, that is beyond a why, is a cause. Is a cause. 
in first peter chapter 5 and verse 10 hear what the bible says but the god of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by christ jesus after that ye have suffered a while can i have you say a while come on say it say it one more time a while he will make you perfect establish strengthen and then oh say it together let's say it together come conclude it say it loud he will say to you after you have suffered for a while a while a while then he will make you perfect you see what challenges does challenges are not meant to drown you challenges are not meant to swallow you no challenges are meant to perfect you to establish you to strengthen you hallelujah some of you if you have not passed through some things in life by now you will never be where you are two of us <laughs> david said the god that gave the lion into my hands the bear into my hand he will give me this uncircumcised philistine god told the children of Israel, he said, I know of the shorter cut for you to get to where you are going, but I will not pass through, I will not pass you through the shorter route. No, I will pass you through the longer route. It is more challenging, but more establishing. That's the problem with so many young men today. They didn't pass through what they should pass through. So they can't sustain success when it comes. It overwhelms them. It overwhelms them. Many children of rich people, it has been said, that a large percentage of them do not always end well with those wealth. Why? Because they didn't know the value. They just give them, boy, they just find themselves in it, boy. Just left about seven cars for the boy. How, may, how old? He doesn't know the value of one car. So he calls his friend. Well, let's, let's, let's jive, man. Let's, let's go to somewhere. They carry one car and then put music at the loudest. The very... The noise confused him. He went and hit one standing block there. The car pieces. He said, thank God, at least I'm not wounded. Uh, Dad, please send somebody to come and carry this. Please, can you send somebody to come and carry this car? <laughs> and then he quickly rushed home and carried the second one. You know, uh, you know. At the same time, he's telling somebody, please get the car fuel. I'm not sure there's fuel inside. I'm coming to take the car now. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. With earrings on his ears and all that, and then gets there, carry the second car. Drive, drive anyhow, drive, drive. He doesn't know whether there is engine oil or not. He knocks the engine and carry the third one. Before long, there will be nothing to carry. Why? Because he has not passed through what he should pass through. Those who jump up, they come down. But those who walk up, they stay up. Praise the name of the Lord. So challenges are to strengthen you. They are to perfect you. They are to make your testimony established. And it is for a while. It may have lasted, but it's not everlasting. That's why I know in this service, finally, my God will say to you, Oh, I didn't hear louder, Amen. I said, God will settle you this morning. He will settle you in that business this morning. He will settle you in that career this morning. If you believe it, shout the loudest, Amen. First Corinthians chapter four and verse seventeen. First Corinthians chapter four and verse seventeen. For this cause have I sent unto you, Timothy who is my beloved son and faithful in the law, 
who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, after you have settled for a while, what is that while or a moment? What is that while or a moment that the Bible is talking about? In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, For he said, I have had thee in the time appointed, accepted. And in the day of salvation, have I succumbed thee? Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. When, it is that, when is that why? Now. That scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment... Worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. That moment is now. What is that moment? Psalm 30 and verse 5. That moment means overnight. For his anger endured but a moment. In his favor, his life, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. 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 Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Overnight. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. What is that moment? Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. He's going forth. He's prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. So expect an instant settlement today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Expect an instant settlement in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever it is that have lingered concerning your life, this morning, your God will settle that matter in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will settle that matter in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will settle that matter in the name of Jesus. Amen. What are the requirements for settlement? What are the requirements for settlement? Number one, you must be born again. 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 In First Peter chapter 5, let's read from verse 9 before getting to verse 10. Whom resist therefore steadfast in the faith knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who are called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, who has called us from darkness, who has translated us into his kingdom. He said, after that you have suffered for a while, then... He will make you perfect, establish, and settle you. Before settling you, you must be called out of darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. You must be born again. You must consciously receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You must be born again. It's good to come to church. But salvation is not all about coming to church. It's consciously giving your life to Jesus. Making him your Lord and your Savior. Maybe you have been coming to church. You come to church, you are in church, but you are not in touch with heaven. You can say yes to Jesus today. And he will accept you. Praise the name of the Lord. You must be born again. Number two, you must return back to God. You must return back to God. Some are born again, but they are backslidden. They have gone away. They have retraced their steps. They have gone back. Return unto the Lord. You knew all the grace that you enjoy when you were on fire with God. 
But certain things have made you drawn back. You have drawn back your zeal from God. Your services to God has been weakened by one challenge or the other. Return to your first love. Return back to God. Return back to your first love. Because God wants to say to you, praise the name of the Lord. God wants to say to you, God wants to tell you, he said, return unto me and I will return unto you, see as the Lord. Return, return, let him say to you. 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 Number three, requirements to be settled today. Settle with God. Settle with God. In Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, Joshua said, Choose you this day who you want to serve. Whether this is the God of heaven or the gods of your father that are beyond that side of the river. But as for me and my household, we have chosen to serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. You are going from one place to another. Settle with God. Settle with God. When you go from one place to the other, you multiply the sorrows. Praise the name of the Lord. In Psalm 16 and verse 4, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offering of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Their sorrows shall be multiplied. Those that hasten after another God, what is it you are looking for that is making you go all around? Go all around. Go all around. Go all around. People carrying you to many places. For what? Because you are looking for business breakthrough. Me too, I want to have breakthrough in life. I, I've suffered enough. Whatever it takes, I will give it to it. And then they are carrying you from one place to the other. Carrying you from one place to the other. Today they carry you to one habalis at uh, Okokoko. Praise the name of the Lord. The next day, you go deep again to Ugeli, not there. Say one man is there. When he walks for you like this, your case is settled. And you follow them. You return. They say, no, 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 no. Uh, you see, I don't know what went wrong this time. But there's one man there. I used to know him. He has been long. All the people he has been working for, they have testified. Where is the man? He's at Jesse. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And then you keep moving from one place to the other. And then you appear in church, piously, looking very spiritual with your bottle of oil. Hallelujah. Amen. God say hypocrisy. See you there. Hypocrite. Because you are looking for husband. You are looking for wife. Move from one place to the other. Some in the name of prophets. Consulting people all about. They give you all manners of prescriptions. Collect money. Collect everything for you. That's the one you like. Since they don't collect money from you here, you don't believe anything that goes from the altar. It's too simple to be true for you. You like spectacular things. So when you go there, the man look at you. <laughs> and he look at you. So you didn't sleep yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Something is brought in your heart. Yes. Yes, prophet. Yes. Your father is in the village. Where else should he be? Yes. Yes. And they now tell you to go and bring three crates of egg. One keg of vegetable oil and one big goat fresh. That's the one you run about. You don't have the money, you go and borrow from everywhere. You go and borrow from everywhere and carry there. 
He says, those that pursue after other gods, they are only multiplying their sorrow. Some people are members. Members, they still consult all those things. Members. If they will go there with their wristband. Wristband, they will go there with their wristband and it doesn't matter. He's just, he, he can even go from an anointing of his street there. Combine everything together. You can deceive man, you can't deceive God. Stay with God. Settle with God. Settle with God. Settle with God. Settle with God. For with God, nothing is impossible. There are some members who are the ones introducing other members to some places. Members. And they ask him, which church do they go? Ah, my church. Now we're not sharp. Praise the name of the Lord. You can't deceive God. Settle with God. Settle with God. So that he can settle you. Praise the name of the Lord. Number four, settle in the house of God. Zion is a place of settlement. In Psalm 132, verses 13 to 18, everything you need is in Zion. Settle with God. Your blessings are in Zion. Settle with God. The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired for his habitation. That's where his blessing resides. Settle with him. So that he can settle every area of your life. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. I know some people are here this morning. You are not born again. You have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Please give me this opportunity. I will pray with you now. You will be born again. And then Jesus will come into your life. And then you are finally settled. Finally settled. Hallelujah. Finally settled. You know we tell people here, if you are here for three months consecutively, hearing God's word, we are too sure that God will settle your case. And that's what God has been doing. Various testimonies we have had. Hallelujah. You didn't come here by accident today. Maybe this is even your first time coming here. Oh, you didn't come here by accident. God wants to settle your case. You have come to a place of settlement. So settle with God. Don't let this service be your last service. Praise the name of the Lord. Settle with God. Settle with God. You keep drinking and keep drinking and keep drinking until you get drunk with the Holy Ghost. Those who are drunkards before, Jesus saved them. You know what, how it works. You sit down there. You take one bottle. When you take one bottle, is there nothing. Take two. Take three. By the time you are getting to the fourth, it's like the spirits are responding to you now. By the time you get to the fifth one, it looks as if the world is beginning to turn a bit. And they trying to get to six and seven. By the time you stand up, <laughs> it is the wind that will be blowing you. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you settle permanently in church, each time you come to church, those, those, and you get to a point where you are intoxicated. And you say, you can speak to the devil, devil. No more! But it all begins by you giving your life to Jesus. Wherever you are there for, you want to give your life to Jesus. Or maybe you went away, you gave your life to Jesus. You backslid and you want to return. I, I'd like you to rise up on your feet now. I pray this simple prayer for you. You will be received into the fold again. And then Jesus will say to every case, Thank you. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Help me clap for them. All those rising up, take your Bible, your bag. All those around them, please help me direct them. Direct them to me, to the front right now. Keep clapping for them, church. Keep clapping for them. Keep coming, keep coming. God bless you. Take your Bible. Don't leave anything on your seat. Take your Bible, your bag, and come, come, come quickly. Don't stop clapping for them. Don't stop clapping for them. Are you sure you are clapping for them, church? Help me clap for them. Help me clap for them. Come quickly. Forget about who is looking at you. Today is your day of salvation. Come quickly. Come quickly. Church, I thought you are celebrating them. 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 Come on, give them a clap. Give Jesus a clap. Give Jesus for every one soul that repents. There is joy. There is jubilation in heaven. Come on, rejoice. 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 Oh, somebody is still seated there. You know how much fire that you are in before. But you are persuaded. You have almost lost all the fire. Things are going haywire. Come out and give your life. Rededicate your life to Jesus now. And something will spark up in your life. Come on, keep coming, keep coming. I'm waiting for the last 
Seven people. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Wherever you are, come quickly. Church, help me celebrate them. Help me celebrate them. Help me celebrate them. Help me celebrate them. Come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you. You are coming. Come on and join us quickly. All these wonderful people in front. I want to thank God for your life. This step you have taken is the greatest step you will ever take in your life. And I thank God for you. God of heaven will give you testimony to show in the name of Jesus. Bow your head. Put your right hand on your chest right now and say this words after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. I realize I'm a sinner. You died for me. You saved me from my sins. Jesus, by your blood, you have washed away my sins. Today, I believe you in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. Be my Lord and my Savior. I am born again now. Never to return back. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious souls you have drawn into your kingdom today. I ask, O oh God, that you keep them. None of them will be lost in the name of Jesus. I put a seal over you. From henceforth, no devil will touch you anymore. Grace to walk with God. Grace to run after God. Receive I decree by the power of God. Every turbulent area of your life. I command the God of heaven to say to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Every dwindling career. Today you are up. Tomorrow you are down. Today you are up. Tomorrow you are down. I command finally the God of this commission. Set to you in the name of Jesus. That up and down in your business from today. No more. In the name of Jesus. In that area of your marriage. All the disappointment you have suffered. You will suffer no more in the name of Jesus. I command marital settlement for you in the name of Jesus. Every turbulent home, trouble here today, trouble here tomorrow, running helter skelter. Finally, I command God to settle you in the name of Jesus. Concerning your children, oh, one area or the other unsettled, some challenge. Today, I speak by the Spirit of God. The God of heaven will settle them in the name of Jesus. Every indebtedness over your destiny, I decree it is finally settled in the name of Jesus. Every financial obligation that you are yet to settle, God miraculously will settle them for you in the name of Jesus. Unsettled career is settled in the name of Jesus. Unsettled businesses are settled in the name of Jesus. Unsettled academic issues are settled in the name of Jesus. Whatever area of your life that requires settlement, you are finally settled now. You are finally settled now. You are finally settled now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The God of this commission goes with you. Nothing fails in your life this week. In the name of Jesus, God will give you a testimony of laughter this week. In Jesus' mighty name. God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations. God bless you.